I'm going to turn all the galaxies in the universe into pieces of cereal and pour them on my head in the swimming pool. And the question is, how high will they all reach? How many galaxies are there out there? There's also a bit of a surprise towards the end of this video that I haven't seen before in any other videos on galaxies and space. So even if you're an astrophysicist, you might find that interesting. I'll come back to this in a second, but in the first video I ever made for YouTube, I shrunk the entire observable universe down to 10 kilometers in diameter, which is about six miles or 100 football pitches. Some people don't seem to like me using football pitches, so how about 37 Titanics? Maybe that's better. I did this because on this scale, galaxies are about the size of pieces of cereal. Here's our galaxy, the Milky Way, and our closest large galaxy, Andromeda, is about a ruler's length away. The galaxies in the universe are spread at a similar distance to this. So I thought this scale was a good way to visualize our universe, but it has a bit of a problem that I'm going to fix in this video. That problem is it's really hard to picture how many pieces of cereal or galaxies there are in a 10 kilometer wide sphere when they're spaced this far apart. Humans just aren't very good at understanding the numbers of floating things in space. So I'm going to put them all in one place. I want to tangibly see and feel just how many galaxies there are out there. I can't help but feel if I could actually swim through the galaxies in the universe, I'd have a much better understanding of the scale of our universe. That's why I'm in this swimming pool and because they can be a little hard to see like this, why I've turned the galaxies into pieces of cereal. This is a pretty standard four lane, 25 by 12.5 by 1.8 swimming pool, half the length of an Olympic swimming pool. When it's full of water, it's a little over half a million liters. And just to remind you, each one of these signifies a galaxy like our own. Each one has hundreds of billions of stars in, each and every one. And there are more planets than there are stars. So hundreds of billions of planets in each piece of cereal. The fact that there is more than one galaxy in the universe already melts my brain. So the fact they can be poured like this is something I struggle with. It looks like I might have to speed this up a little bit. So if you guessed that all the galaxies in the universe would indeed fill this pool, you'd be right. It's hard to wrap my head around just how many there are in here, but it doesn't actually end here. Because they actually fill more than 355 of these swimming pools. This is the observable universe. This is what hundreds of billions of galaxies look like if you put them all in one place. Now that they're all crammed in next to each other, let's turn them back into mini galaxies. This is just one pool amongst the 300. It's just mind boggling, isn't it? Here's the Milky Way here, just this one. And our solar system is about a third to a half way out from the center. And our galaxy alone is so vast and wonderful, but it's just one amongst all of this. This is actually a lower limit to the number of galaxies like our own that are out there. And this is just the observable universe, as far out as we can see, because light has only had the chance to get to us from these galaxies. But we know the true universe stretches beyond this. It's either a lot bigger than this, or it's infinitely bigger than this. It's hard to look at all of this and not be overwhelmed, but it's also hard not to think something else. It's hard not to think, are we sure about this? Is this an estimate? Because these numbers seem a bit silly, don't they? How do we really know this stuff? Often in science, explaining how we know something can take a while. 
and involve some equations and some complexity, but the answer to whether this is true or not is pretty easy. We know there are this many galaxies because, well, we can take a picture of them and just count them. That is literally it. The difficulty is in taking the pictures. Most galaxies are so far away and faint that we need a telescope in space to see them. Like this one here, the Hubble Space Telescope. In 1995, we used it to concentrate on one small patch of dark sky for 10 days to see if there were any galaxies out there. This is the image it took. It's called the Hubble Deep Field, and it might be the most important image ever taken. When it was first processed, nobody could quite believe what they were seeing. NASA weren't sure that they'd see any galaxies in such a small patch of sky. Until then, we'd only found a few thousand galaxies. Some didn't even think spending all this time taking this image was worth it. There are six stars in this image. They have an obvious cross shape and I've put circles around each of them. Otherwise, every single other point of light you can see is a galaxy, not a star. There are 3,000 galaxies in this image. But amazingly, that's not the crazy part. The crazy part is how big that patch of sky is compared with the moon. It's just 1 24 millionth of the night sky. We've since taken many more of these images and it's the same in every direction. And if you multiply 3,000 times 24 million, you get 72 billion. We just take the number for a patch of sky and multiply it by the rest of the sky. Because wherever we point Hubble and others, the density of galaxies is the same. We've since taken slightly better images, so 72 billion has been pushed up to about 200 billion. We can see about 200 billion galaxies as a bare minimum with current technology. And these are the big galaxies we can see, the ones like our own. There are so many smaller galaxies too faint to detect, and it's estimated that there are more galaxies now because we see these galaxies in the distant past because it takes a long time for their light to reach us. So you might hear estimates of two trillion galaxies out there, but I've just used the smallest number of 200 billion for the swimming pools here. These are the galaxies we can actually see and take pictures of. Now, as promised, I'm going to try something that I think is fascinating. I haven't personally seen this before in any other video, so hopefully this will be interesting even if you knew everything I've already talked about. I'm standing in Antarctica where there's no light pollution on a perfectly clear night. We can see about 2,000 stars here on a night like this. I'm going to switch off all the stars in our galaxy, including the sun, of course. Then I'll switch off some nearby galaxies like Andromeda and the small and large megalanic clouds, which you can see in the southern hemisphere here. Then I'm going to make my eyes and the camera a few billion times more sensitive when I click my fingers for the last time. So this candle is ridiculously bright and melting my face off, so I just need to... So this is the night sky behind our night sky. There is no sun, so this is not daytime and there are no clouds in the sky. I've applied the patches of galaxies that Hubble has imaged to the whole sky. This is a simulation of what those 100 billion galaxies look like. It's 100 billion, not 200, because I'm only looking at half the night sky here. These are half the galaxies in the swimming pools. We always think of space as black. To our eyes, that's what we see. But the reality is, wherever you are in the universe, however empty it might look, you are wrapped in the light of hundreds of billions of galaxies. If you could just amp up the brightness, the universe would look like a gray blanket of cloud. This is out there right now, above you, around you, as you watch this video. It's just like this, this exact density of galaxies hiding in the shadows 
of the depths of the universe, behind the dazzling stars next door to us. Behind our own swirling galaxy of stars, there is an almost endless number of islands of worlds. Shakespeare said, it is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. And we did just that. We took hold of our own destiny and kept looking for the truth, kept questioning, building, understanding. And finally, we got to a point where we could put a telescope in space. Science forged our destiny and we reached beyond the stars to find a universe of unimaginable size. We are so lucky to live through a time where we found this hidden world. I've got one more important thing to share about these galaxies, but first I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been super kind in the comments of my other videos and a huge thank you to my patrons here. Do please feel free to like, subscribe, ring the bell, etc. But if you'd really like to support me making these videos, joining my Patreon would be massively appreciated. Just look for Epic Spaceman over there. I share behind the scenes images and videos there as I make the next video. And you can also be an astronaut like all of these legends here. Thank you. Apart from feeling pretty overwhelmed by the numbers, these galaxies fill me with so much wonder and so many questions. And I think perhaps the one that's at the top of my list is, are we the only life in the universe? I'm currently working on a longer video about searching for life using telescopes, and I won't give too much away, but I will give you one bit of information that really surprised me. Data from the Kepler Space Telescope estimated that there are around 11 billion Earth-like planets in our galaxy. Planets going around a star like our sun, in the habitable zone where the temperature is just right for there to possibly be liquid water. 11 billion in just this one galaxy among all of these. So to say we haven't scratched the surface of what's out there would be perhaps the greatest understatement you could say about anything. Humankind has so many incredible journeys ahead of us, fully exploring the planets in our solar system, working out ways to increase the speed of space travel and using and building new telescopes that can see planets beyond our solar system and find signs of simple life in their atmospheres, to name just a few. We haven't even started seriously looking for life in our backyard yet either. There are really exciting possibilities on Jupiter's ice moon Europa or Saturn's snow white moon Enceladus. I think this is the greatest period of space discovery in history, but it's difficult to feel like you can be personally involved in any of this exploration. But I do know of a good way that you can be involved. In 1980, Carl Sagan, a personal hero of mine, co-founded the non-profit organization called the Planetary Society. I'm really proud to say they have sponsored this video. They believe that space is for everyone and they take that seriously. Their goal is to get their worldwide members involved and a part of the three things that they focus on. Advancing planetary exploration, the search for life beyond Earth and planetary defense from asteroids. That has got to be the best mission of any company in the world, surely. Headed by Bill Nye, the CEO, with people like Buzz Aldrin on the advisory council, you'd be in good company if you joined as a member. With help from their members, the Planetary Society has launched experimental spacecraft, supports the ongoing search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and helps the world's experts find and track dangerous asteroids. They fight to increase NASA's funding and get their members involved in every way they can. Fundamentally, their mission is to empower their worldwide community of 2 million space enthusiasts to be a genuine part of space exploration. If you're passionate about space and our future in it, you can become a member today at planetary.org slash epic. There's also a link at the top of my description 
below the video. I'm a member and I'm very happy to be. Otherwise, thanks again everyone for your support on my recent videos. It's been incredibly positive and really helps motivate me as I work on the next. As mentioned earlier, I'm still working on a longer video about searching for life beyond Earth. It's turned into a bigger video than I expected. Final thanks again to the Planetary Society for sponsoring this video. I wouldn't recommend them if I didn't think they were amazing, so do please check them out. I look forward to seeing you again soon for another Epic Spaceman video. Cheers.